Checky, check, check. Let's go. Hello, everyone. My name is, do you hear that? That's a, that's a car. But I'm Will Carmack. I've been doing a lot of animation recently and have become a master at Photoshop. And so today I'm gonna show you how to Photoshop better words into your mouth. Bad joke, I'm sorry. I've been animating and editing a lot of pictures recently, especially in Photoshop, and I now feel like I've become a wizard at recreating bits and pieces of a painting or a photo. And so today's tutorial is gonna be within Adobe Photoshop, and we are going to talk about how to recreate pictures, recreate paintings. How can you cut something out in Photoshop? There's that hole right there. And how do you fill it to make it look like there was never a hole in the first place? We are learning lots of valuable stuff in today's tutorial. Before before this video gets started, I forgot to say in the beginning that this is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, so here is this famous painting that I forgot the name of. I'll put it right here. This is something that I would animate and bring back to life in an animation. I am animating this one soon, so this is the perfect example for this tutorial, because I need to cut out and refill these pieces anyway. All right, so open Photoshop. By the way, this is more of a breakdown. I don't expect you to follow along step by step, but I want to show you the procedural process of recreating an image. Let's get started. So we have Photoshop here. If we grab our pin tool, the trusty dusty pin tool, I just wanna show you first just how quick and fast it can be. Let's say I wanna get rid of this moon. I will just create a mask right over it. Right click, make selection, and maybe a feather radius of two would be good. I will hit okay. You see now we have the marching ants. We have that little selection around the moon selected. So if we wanted to get rid of the moon and recreate just the sky in this painting, I could hit M to bring up the marquee tool. Right click and you can hit fill. A content aware menu is going to pop up. All you gotta do is hit okay. And honestly, Photoshop, wow, so fast. Photoshop literally just did like a, a perfect job. So just let me start off with that to show you how easy this process can be. So. I got a little ahead of myself here. Let me undo that. I will zoom in and let me briefly cut out the moon. All right, perfect. You can see here we have a nice mask around this moon. I will right click. And this is me wanting to cut the moon out. I now want the moon as its own layer and we will have to fix the background because of that. So I'll make my selection. I'll maybe do 0 0.6. I get this nice moon selection. I will, I will hit M to get the marquee tool. I will right click and I will do layer via copy. So now, if you look, the moon is now its own layer. I can zoom out and you can see the moon up there. But if I get rid of the moon, you can see I haven't actually recreated any of the painting. I've just cut the moon out. So now, for us to be able to say the sky and the moon are two different layers in the same painting, we could even get the marquee tool, go right over this moon and hit M, right click, fill, okay. Bam, and so now this, now we have this empty sky slate and we can just make the moon layer visible. So if we're working on an animation where we're building a photo or moving through a photo, the moon could be a set piece that you put in the distance and it doesn't get in front of the sky because if you look, you replace the moon. So there would never be a problem to begin with. So that's the easiest way to recreate part of a photo. A general marquee, marching ants, mask, right click, fill, content aware. That's really broad. I'm gonna show you how I can get into the nitty gritty with it to recreate a photo. So let me briefly, it's gonna take me forever, mask out this lion really quick. But now we have this lion that is masked out with the pin tool. But this brings on a whole new slew of problems because instead of the moon, which has a nice easy background that Photoshop can content aware fill easily, we've got this lion here and there's like mountains, a desert, a lady, and a sand dune all in the background that we will now have to recreate because we just want to cut out of the lion. But you know what? That is hazards of the job. If we want to be able to animate around the lion, that means we need to replace everything behind him. So as you know, we have our pin tool path selected. We will right click, make selection. Um, I'll do a feather of two, why not? And we go to the marquee tool by hitting M, right click and layer via copy. Check that out. Now we have this lion, very cool. And so how I can begin starting to animate stuff, something like this, is I will hold down control and click on the lion layer. So now I have marching ants around that mask I created for this piece. So I've gone back to just this normal uh, lion selection. I will make the actual lion layer invisible and delete the lion cutout from this main one. So with this, I would maybe wanna start by fixing this spot right here. What I would do is I'd grab the pin tool, try my best to perfectly recreate the area around a hole. 
and I will make a selection, feather it, and I'll go fill. And I actually think that looks pretty decent. And I can go kind of spot to spot and fix the issues. I'll do a blend of this and I'll also grab the clone stamp tool and uh, that just paints other parts of the image onto your image. So if I hold Alt and click right here, I can try and make this line not suck as much. And now I can look back and see, I like that. The edge looks fine there, even though there used to be a lion's leg. And so that was just being really specific with where I do my content to wear fill and then the clone stamp tool. For this part right here, I almost think it would be easiest to just mask out the mountain and copy and paste it right there. So I'll grab the pin tool, see how fast you can do this. We're going for, for, we're, we're going for speed here, not accuracy. Just kidding, we're going for education. And you know what, since that this little black pattern keeps going, I will copy that too. So I have now copied these mountains, copy, paste, I did control V, and now I can bring this motherfucker, I can bring this guy over here, maybe put this mountain right here, knowing eventually I will put this person on top of it. And then from here, I'll play around with the, the mountains. Like I'll grab the eraser tool and maybe like weasel my way into making it look a little more blended in. You know what, sometimes I'll hit Control T to pull up the transform menu and I'll right click and horizontal flip it to give the mountains, even though they're the exact same mountains, a little extra pizzazz, you know, keep it a little varied. And now bam, you can see I've recreated a little part of the desert and the mountains and that sand dune coming up. I'm putting that line on top. Ooh, looks so good. And now to fix the hole in the sky, I'll grab just like the lasso tool and I can make a rough little shape around the lion. I will right click, hit fill, enter, or just hit okay. Let's see, will this work? Wow, it worked beautifully. I'm telling you, the content to wear fill in After Effects is literally mind blowing. <laughs> so now we can put this lion like right back on top of the painting. Okay, so now we just gotta put this lady back on top of the lion. For the sake of time, I will do her arm since that's mainly what needs to be above everything. Okay, I now have this lady top half masked. Sounds weird. We will right click, oh, hit P to go back to the pen tool in case you went off. Right click, make selection, I'll do 0.5 and I will copy and paste. And now we've officially achieved this lady being in front of the lion and the mountain. But if we wanna animate the fake camera in the future to go past this lady, you would notice that the lion's missing half of its neck and face. So how would we fix that? Well, this is one of those things that's more complicated, but I will always try. We will always start with the typical like pin tool, maybe guess what a lion's mane looks like. Something like this. So I will piece by piece kind of recreate parts of an image or a character um, that I think might be revealed in the animation. Ooh, that looks great. Well, so I just, uh, Content Aware filled his mane back on, and maybe it'll let me do that with his face as well. Okay, this will be crazy if that works. Okay, and then fill. Honestly, I feel like I just turned this lion into a buffalo, but look at that. You would, we would now be able to pan behind this lady laying down with her ukulele and see the lion. And we'll, we would be able to pan past the lion and see the mountains. And we would even be able to pan past the mountains and see the moon and the sky. Because with recreating a photo, all of these pieces are different. So you can literally use these to build a world in After Effects or Premiere or other softwares. I'm done here, by the way. I think this was a great explanation of how you can problem solve or troubleshoot little editing fixes when you're recreating a photo. It's all about just time, patience, content aware fill, the marquee tool, a little bit of the eraser tool. And now as a treat for sticking around so long, I'm gonna show you the absolute best way in the whole world to export all these layers that you have cut out. Mountain 2. So typically I would take all of these and use them as like set pieces in a 3D um, environment in After Effects. And so I need to get all of these cutouts into my file finder to put into my After Effects. I used to just like go to file, export, and export as, or quick export as PNG, but quick export as PNG has always been the fastest option, but it sucks when you have to do it for each layer. So my new trick is I will select them all in order as they are in the layers panel, and I can just hit right click and quick export as PNG, and it will export all of them at once. So I'll select the folder I want all of these 
quick export PNGs to go to. And check this out. I now have all the pieces I just cut out in this folder. And so to me, I do think Photoshop makes it incredibly easy for anyone to be able to recreate a photo and play around with the pieces in an animation sense. My next tutorial is gonna be how to animate the 3D camera in After Effects to correspond with these cutouts. See, every parallax needs photo recreation, but not all photo recreation necessarily needs a 3D camera. So it's gonna be two different tutorials. Sorry, but it'll be worth it. We did it! Okay, did that make sense? I really fucking hope, I really hope that makes sense. I'm ending the screen recording now. And guys, um, you know the deal. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Squarespace. Let me tell everyone about you. Well, you're an all-in-one platform to begin with, from online stores to marketing tools and analytics. And are you an artist, like me, and you want to showcase your work to the world? You can use Squarespace's portfolios and galleries to streamline the process of getting your work to the world. Because they have award-winning designer templates that lets your work shine even brighter. People like seeing your work displayed professionally, and Squarespace allows you to do that with the portfolios and galleries. And um, are you a SoundCloud rapper? Because I am. One of my favorite parts about Squarespace is that I can link my SoundCloud to my website. Squarespace encourages cross-promotional platform usage. Share your Instagram, your Twitter, anything on your website. And at the end of the day, we all care about numbers. Let's be honest, don't lie to yourself. So we all appreciate some good analytics. And Squarespace has them all. You get to know how many people came to your website, who's interacting with what, your demographic, where they're coming from, the entire overview. So if you want a good grasp on who's coming to your website and who your audience is, get Squarespace. They have incredibly detailed analytics. No, you can get 10% off your first website or domain at squarespace.com slash willcarmack. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Thank you for helping me pay my rent, Squarespace. Just a lot to be grateful for. I hope you learned something. Goodbye. Where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will and have a nice day. I'm getting worse and worse at outro. I just don't know if I did that whole outro in the dark or the light. Like, I'm running with it. I'm committing.